Uh, okay, good morning. So let us continue the lesson with lines and space. So if you don't mind, let me just start with a very simple refresher, memory refresher problem, yes? So let me write this for you and then we can continue. Yeah, this is a very, a, a very, very simple problem, but I just want to refresh your memory. So, uh, consider the line. So L x is equal to one minus t. Y is equal to three t plus two, and uh, z is 40. Now hopefully this sentence is very familiar for you. So that is actually one of the goals of my teaching this lesson. So when I say a line and I write something like this, you in principle understand that this is indeed a line, yes? Do you remember? We talked about canonical form of an equation for the line and then this is a parametric form. And of course, in principle, I have to mention where what is the range of my parameter but usually this is always the case that P belongs to R. So I would say they consider this line and the points so it's A with coordinates 4, minus 7, minus 12 and B minus 1, 8, and 4. So the first question, true or false? So A belongs to L. True or false? We want to check it if that's correct or not. B belongs to L. Correct or not? Number three. Uh, give a, a point on L, except of course these two points if any one of them is on the line. And number four, give a direction vector. Number five, write uh, the canonical form of the equation for the equation of the line. <coughs> okay. Yeah, these are just very, very simple ideas. We just want to refresh our memory and then we can try to solve nicer problems, of course. Uh, okay, so let us just do it together. Uh, so, I have given you a point, a, a line L, and I told you that how to visualize this. So it means that you choose a T, you put it here, you get X, Y, and Z. X, Y, and Z together makes a point. Assume that you have a computer, you highlight that point, yes. And then you, in, uh, in principle, you have to do it for all t's, which is impossible, of course, because there are infinitely many. But assume it's it, it's possible to imagine. Then uh, points after a point they will be turned on, and then after you have done everything, you see a, con a continuity of points, and that is your line. Yes, that's the way that you can visualize. Okay, now what is the answer to this one? Does a belong to l or not? <coughs> So how should I do that? For example, if A is supposed to be on L, it means that there should be a value for T so that for that particular value, the pixel corresponding to this A is turned on. Yes? So in principle, it means that is there any T so that I can satisfy uh, these equations together? Okay? So... Now, tell me, is, do you think that A belongs to L? Yes or no? Yes. How? So, for example, you take X and put 4. 
x is 1 minus t, and then you calculate t from here, so it becomes minus 3, yes? But then you have to put this t in the other two ones and to see that if you get the right number, yes? Or you can say that I put this one and I calculate the t should be the same. That's up to you. But let us just do it in our head so it's easy. So I put minus 3 here, it's minus 9 plus 2 is minus 7, so far so good. And I put it here, it becomes minus 12. Yeah, so that's correct. So it means that uh, I have to check, of course, then y values. So this means that y becomes 3 times minus 3 plus 2, which is minus 7, and that's correct. And then I put uh, z, 4 times minus 3 is minus 12, that's also correct. So yes, this is true. A belongs to oh. But if I go to the other one, number 2, I do the same thing. I take minus 1 and put it there. Minus 1 equals to 1 minus t, and I calculate t, it becomes 2. Then I calculate y and z. Yes, y becomes 3 times 2 plus 2. How much is that? Uh, 8. That's also true. And I put it here. 4 times 2 is 8, but this is not correct. At least even one of them is not correct, you say that no, the point is not there, so this is false. Okay, now if I ask you to give a random point on L, uh, what is, what do you do? You pick any number for T and put it there. So the simplest one, it hasn't been repeated before, is 0, yes? So probably a random point is C, put T equal to 0. And it becomes 1, 2, and 0. So that's a random point. You can, choose, you can change it to any other number except that minus 3 and 2. And of course, you can also put 2. If you put 2, the first one becomes minus 1, the second one becomes 8, but the third one becomes also 8. So minus 1, 8, and 8 is also another point. Yes? And now if I ask you to give a direction vector, do you remember what was a direction vector? We had the normal vector for the plane, we had the direction vector for a line, the normal vector to the plane is perpendicular to the plane. The direction vector is parallel to the line. Yes. So how, how should I do that? If you remember, you should be able to read it from the equation. So let me just read you a little bit. If I have a, if I have a plane of this well, whose equation is this, in a, if I ask you to read a normal vector, A, B, and C are the components of the normal vector. Why it is the case? You should go and see the proof. We had this before. But now, do you remember what was, how can I read the direction vector from the equation? Yes. Uh, you read the value in front of t. Yes. So the coefficient, that's the, yeah, the coefficient. The coefficients of t, yes. So I would say that, okay, I can call the direction vector d, and then I would write the, the coefficient of t here is minus 1, the coefficient of t there is 3, and the coefficient of t there is 4. So this is one of the uh, vectors that is parallel to my line, and that's one direction vector. And finally, write the canonical form for the equation. Do you remember what was the meaning of the canonical form? Uh, you wrote it... Uh... Independent of t. Yeah. So I should get rid of t. When I get rid of t, I get an equation. Not one equation. Do you remember two equations? I will get two equations. So then it means that... By the way... Uh, how many equations you see here? Three. Okay, three. But how many uh, three uh, uh, variables you have? One, and that is t, yes? Because as soon as I give you t, others have to follow, yes? So it means that there is one free uh, parameter, and that is understandable, because line is one-dimensional object, so you have only one degree of freedom. Okay. So then, uh, if I want to write the canonical form, it is, to, uh, it is up to me to calculate t from here, here, and here. And then, because all of them are equal to t, they have to be equal to themselves, yes? So from here, I calculate t, uh, it becomes x minus uh, 1 minus x plus 1, yes? Minus x plus 1, that's correct. I calculate t from here. It becomes what? Uh, y minus 2 divided by 3. And I calculate it from here. Uh, it is, sorry, t is z over 4. Okay, so there's something that I want to mention here. If I equate them, then you get minus x plus 1 equals to 
uh, y minus 2 over 3 and z over 4. I was a little bit careless when I was telling it. This is correct, but the standard one, the x, y, and z variables should be ha start with the coefficient 1. That is canonical form. I didn't mention this explicitly last time. But if this is not wrong, so you have to write it in a way that x, uh, the, the coefficients of x, y, and z are all equal to 1. They are already 1, so I don't need to change anything. But this is not 1, this is minus 1. So I have to write it 1 and then divide it by minus 1. This is the standard canonical form. And the reason is that if I ask you to read uh, a direction vector, then you read the denominators. The denominators are minus 1, 3, and 4. But it might be, if you don't write it like that, you write the denominator 1, 3, and 4, which is wrong. So when you have the canonical form in its standard form, then you take the denominators, they are actually... Uh, they are actually the components of the direction vector. Okay, so that is, I think, good. Uh, now let me ask you one question. This is also something simple. I will probably will wait for you. It's a very simple example. Let L be the line. I always mean a straight line, yes? Be the line that passes through... The point A uh, with coordinates 1, 5, and 3 and is parallel to uh, D equals to 3, 0, and 1. Determine a point on L. A point, let me say, B on L, so that its distance to the origin is uh, 5 square root of 2 length. So this is a very, very simple problem, so I think you can solve it yourself. Get the point or points? Yes? What are they? You don't know? So, what is the method at least? Yes, what should we do? So, probably you haven't found the way that you have to think, yes? Let L be the line that passes through this point and parallel to that. So if I ask you, can you write an equation for this, you, can, you should say yes, yes, because that's a very standard one. Yes. Whenever you want to write an equation for the line, what you need to have, you need to have one point, you need to have a vector that you can convince yourself or it's given to you, it's parallel to your line. That's completely a standard way of writing the equation for the line. So which one you prefer to write? Let us write the, parameter, uh, the parametric form, yes? Parametric form, so I have to check the pronunciation. Okay, so uh, what should we do? I would say that x, so the line L is x equals to, y equals to, and z equals to. So for the coefficients of t, I have to choose the components of the direction vector. So this becomes what? 3t. 0t and 
then one t. And for this constant number, I have to choose the coordinates of my points. So it becomes plus one, plus five, and plus three. Yes? And I hope that you agree with me. There is no reason to write zero t, so I just write five. Yes? So that is the equation. But now, there are infinitely many points on this line. So assume that this, I don't know, assume that this is the line L. Just visualize. And this is your origin. You want to find a point uh, on this uh, line so that when I measure its distance to O, it becomes 5 square root of 2. That's the goal. Okay, before doing any calculations, how you, do you an analyze the problem? Do you think such a point might exist or might not exist or how? Yeah? It feels like there should be two points. Is it always guaranteed that we have two points? No. Or, okay. No. Yeah, the answer is no, but okay, how do you know? So can you analyze the different situations? If it passes, it depends on the distance. Exactly. It depends on this vertical distance from here to here. Yes? So you imagine a sphere with radius 5 square root of 2, which is centered at O. If that sphere is a small and does not cut my line, there are no points. Yes? If it is exactly, the radius exactly matches this one, then I will get one point because, because my line and that sphere only touch at one point. Yes? Or if this is bigger, then of course, then I will get two points, not more than that, yes? Because if I have a sphere and a line, either there are no intersection or they touch each other, so there's one intersection or two. I cannot have more than that. So we don't know the situation yet. Okay, so here, uh, we will of course also learn, that's an important part might be today, that we should find the shortest distance from a point to a line, as we did for the shortest distance from a point to a plane, yes? So now here, I would say that, okay, I am looking for a point whose distance from O, which is 0, 0, 0, is this number. So and I know the distance formula, okay? But can I say something specific about B? I know that B is on this line. What can I write for the x, y, and z coordinates? So the y coordinate is definitely should be clear because that point should lie on this point, a line. That point should lie on this uh, line. So it means that what is the y coordinate? Five. But what is the x coordinate? We don't know exactly, but we know that there should be a number t so that the x coordinate of b follows this four. Yes? So I would say that it is three t plus one. This I want you to understand. And the z coordinate should be the same t plus three. So this, uh, uh, make sure that you understand this part. So as soon as I know that my point is on the line, it means that there is a particular T for which this pixel is turned on, yes? When I choose that T. So this is the only thing that we need to do. And then I don't know why was it hard for you. Because now you want to find the distance from O to B. The distance formula, do you remember? OB is 5 square root of 2, and OB is the square root of the difference between x coordinates, x coordinates squared, so this becomes 3t plus 1 minus 0 squared. The difference between y coordinates squared, so it is 5 squared, and the difference between z coordinates squared. This is supposed to be 5 square root of 2, yes? And then everything is easy. I just raise these things to power 2. This square root is gone, but I have to square rules, so it becomes 90 squared plus 6t plus 1, then I have 25, then I have t squared plus 6t plus 9. On the other side, if I raise it to power to 25 times 2 is 50. And this one and that one is 10t squared, and then I have 12t, and then I have uh, minus 16, yes. Oh, no. Uh, so this is 10, 35 minus 15. Yeah? 
and I start solving this equation. So this t is minus 12 plus or minus this number to power to 144 minus 4 times this that is plus 600. Uh, usually I don't give these bad numbers when I was designing the questions. So do you see any flow in my calculations? Let me see. Oh yeah, the, the, the answer is, so that was wrong, so that's supposed to be too, but anyway. Anyway, so this is, uh, then divided by this is 20, so that's a very, very bad problem, okay? But at least it becomes minus 12 plus or minus square root of 744 divided by 20, okay? But we can make it a little bit simpler, but not that much. So because I can factor a 4 out, uh, this becomes 150, and then if I factor a 4 out, it becomes 36. And that 4, it becomes 2. That 2 and that 2 are cancelled, so it becomes 6. And then this becomes 10. And then this becomes uh, 36 plus uh, 150 is 186. I might even factor a little bit more, yes? But anyway, this is the answer. But then what you are supposed to do, this is a very, very bad example because of the numbers, but at the end, if I say in this case how many points I got, because I got two answers for t, I have to plug them back here. It gives me one point with a positive sign. I, cho I choose the negative sign and put it here, it gives me another point. So that was the case. So that it was not the, but at least if you want, you have to write the answer. This is not acceptable as the answer. So you need to write B. You have to write five, and then you have to replace these numbers there and write it here and there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. If I ask you to write an equation for the line that passes through two points, for example, one zero three and b equals to 2, 2, and 3. If I ask you to write an equation for the line that passes through these two points, how do you act? Or at least write it, okay, so just write an equation. And for example, if I just say write, that is up to you if you want to choose the parameter, uh, parametric form or the canonical form, yes? So, if I give you two points, there is one single line that passes through that, and I want you to find an equation for that line. Okay, I will wait a little bit for you, because that's also very simple. Okay, did, did you solve it? Yes? So, what we need, uh, what we need is actually, so what was the point? Can you read it for me? See, it's in everything here. Read it for me, please. So, what was the point A? One, zero, and three. One, zero, and three. And what was the point B? Two, two. Two, two, three. Okay. So, so you need to find a point which you have even more than one. So that's good. But you need to find a direction vector. So, how do you find a direction vector? Actually, the vector AB can play the role of the direction vector, or vector BA, it doesn't matter. So this is the line that I am looking for, but I know two points on it. So it is very clear that vector AB can play the role of my direction vector. So what I do, I just calculate AB, what happens, the final point minus the initial point, and it becomes 1, 2, and 0. Okay, and then you can write the equation, I don't know which one, parametric one or just the canonical one. But the canonical one has some problems, yes, do you remember? Because the denominator is zero. It doesn't mean that we cannot write it. If you don't mind, let us start with the canonical form. So what should I do? I would write x minus, and I have a fraction, y minus, I have a fraction. But in the case of, so here, the, the, the denominator is this number. Here, the denominator is this number, okay? And what should I put here and there? 
I either choose to work with A or I choose to work with B. So if you don't mind, let us choose with working with A. So this becomes 1, this becomes 0. But I cannot go further and put another fraction because the denominator should be 0. So in that case, do you remember what I'm supposed to do? So, yeah. so you need to uh, write something like this and write z is equal to the common coordinate. Yes, this becomes 3. That is the canonical 4. So then I would simplify it like this. So this becomes x minus 1 is equal to y over 2 and z is equal to 3. So usually, parametric 1 is easier to handle. In, in this case, you have to be careful, okay? So if I want to write the parametric form, I would write x is equal to uh, 1, and I have chosen to work with a. So this becomes 1t plus the x-coordinate of my point. y is equal to uh, 2t plus 0. And then z is equal to uh, 0 plus 3. So that's it. So either you write it in parametric form or you write it in canonical form. Yes? But let me ask you one question. If I have chosen to write, to write the equation with b, this is a little bit different from the situation of planes. So let me just write it with d, with b. So then it becomes x is equal to t plus 2, y is 2t plus 2, and z is again 3. Could you feel that they are the same lines? It's not that easy. For example, if I give you this plane, this is an equation of a plane. If I give you this equation, you immediately realize that's the same plane. Yes, that's the same equation, not the same equation, an equivalent equation. So it's been multiplied by two. So you realize immediately by looking at it that these two are the same plane. But can you see the same thing here? Because you know I have chosen to work with A, I got this. I have chosen to work with B, I got this. But assume that so now, in principle, if we are not in trouble, they have to be the equations of the same line. Yes, otherwise we are in trouble. If I choose with A, I get something else. If I choose with B, I get. But it is not that trivial as before, that algebraically they are the same. Do you feel that? So how can I go from one uh, set of equations to another set of equations? If they are to be the same line, there should be a connection between equations. First of all, do you understand the question is a valid or question? Yes. It, it has to be addressed. Yes. Yes? Huh? Uh, maybe it's something to do with, uh, uh, in the first case, uh, x, uh, the x1. It's t plus 1, mm -hmm. and the y is 2t, mm -hmm. and in the second one it is t plus 2, mm -hmm. which is 1 more, mm -hmm. and then y is 2t two two plus 2, so it's 2 more, mm -hmm. and that is uh, how t changes. It's okay, how t, so the, because you, this is your observation, and that is close to what I want to say, but that is not complete. Okay, so can you tell me how t changes? Uh, T changes in the x by uh, no, one. but you cannot say that t changes in x by one unit because I have only one t. Yes, and then you are saying that t changes in y by how many units? Two units. Okay. No, again one unit. Yes, that is now good because if I change t in this equation to t plus one. Then this becomes t plus 2. This becomes 2 times t plus 1, which becomes 2t plus 2. And then this remains the same. So this means that they are actually the same uh, lines. What is the difference between these two equations? So for example, if you choose to put t0 here, then you will get 1, 0, and 3. So this point will be highlighted. Yes? 
But this point will also be highlighted here, but a little bit later. Yes? Or a little bit earlier. When you put t equals to minus 1, it, this gives me 1, this gives me 0, this gives me 3. Yes? So it means that if you are doing it one by one, might be one of them is behind the other one. But if you wait enough to finish, which we cannot because there are infinitely many, the points will be actually highlighted. The set of points that you see, it's highlight, they are highlighted, or the set, the same set. But one of them is, for example, when I put t equals to zero, this point is highlighted. This point will also be highlighted here, but earlier, when I put t equals to minus one. Is that understandable? So it means that this is the way that you have to think. And that is not usually easy if the equations are complicated. So checking that two equations are actually referring to the same line, you have to have a systematic way. Either you have to observe what is going on, that these two lines. For example, let me write an example here. I don't know if that's the example or non-example, but let me just write it here. So here I write x equals to, and this time I want to check, uh, 9 over 2t, and then I have minus 4, and then I have y equals to minus 6t plus 5, and z equals to 3t minus 2. Let me call this one line number one. Let me call another one line number two. X is equal to uh, 3t minus one. And then y is equal to uh, minus 4t plus one. And z is equal to 2t. Let me double check that I have written things completely right. Yes, that's correct. Okay. For example, if I give you these two lines, do you think that they are the same lines or they might be different? So in that case, at least we knew from the beginning they have to be the same line. Because I'm writing, I'm writing an equation for this line that passes through A and B, and then you know that there's a unique line that passes through A and B. So if I use A and I end up here, and I use B and I end up here, they have to be the same. Then we will we, we become a little bit cautious and realize that, yes, this is the common. But now what do you think about L1 and L2? Do you think they are the, they are the same line? At least I want you to feel, even if you can succeed to understand if they are the same line or not, it is not as easy as before. That's what I want to understand. Okay, we will come back to this later, but I want you to forget about this method. Try to think about other methods that you can convince yourself that these two are the same line. Yes, if I haven't written something wrong. Yes, minus one, yes. I want you to tell me how, in, in any other way, can I convince myself that these are the same lines, even though they have written quite differently. You see, the coefficients of t are all different, and the points here are also all different. But now I'm claiming that they have to be the same line. Yes, Dino? I just see it's a factor of 2 divided by 3. Mm -hmm. The difference between... So you are thinking in that way again. But momentarily, forget about this method. Can you think about any other way that you can convince yourselves that these two lines are the same? Yes, Dino? If I choose two points for the first line, Check if, if they are in that one. That's one way. Yes? So you just choose two random points from one of them and to see if that those two points also lie here. If that is the if the answer is yes, then definitely they are the same. Yes? They cannot be different. Yes, because two points match. So let us just follow this method. 
And if you don't mind, let us start from here. The a good random point is to put t equal to 0, I will get minus 1, 1, and 0. And another random point is what? Put t equal to 1. Yeah, t equal to 1 is good. So it is 2, minus 3, and 2. Okay? okay, now I ask you, do you think this point lies on this line? So you put x, so you put 0 for z you get t is equal to 2 third, yes? And then you put 2 third here, it becomes 9 over 2 times 2 third minus 4. So it becomes minus 1, yes? So that's correct. And then you put y minus 6 times 2 third plus 5, and then it becomes 1. That's also correct. So this means that I chose a random point on this one, and I convince myself this random point, whatever it is, it is here, yes? But it is not enough, because you might be so unlucky that you are choosing exactly this point, yes? They are not the same, but they share one point. Of course, the chances to just randomly guess this point is close to zero, but if you believe me, if you're unfortunate, you will exactly get that point. Okay? So this is not enough, so you have to take another one. So then I need to calculate this one. If you don't, I don't know which way you want to start. If, I think this is better even, yes? I start from z again. So I put 3t minus 2 equals to 2. I get how much? I get 4 over 3. And then I put 4 over 3 here. 9 over 2 times 4 over 3 minus 4. So what's the answer? This is 3, 2, 6, 2, yes? Is that right? Yes. And then I put this one in the second one. So it's minus 6 times 4 over 3 plus 5. And then we calculate it, it's minus 2. That's also correct. So this means that these two points that lie on this one is guaranteed to lie on this one. So these are actually the same lines, even though they have more or less nothing in common in their equations. Yes? So these kind of things I, I want you to expect for it. Okay, can you tell me another method to convince yourself about it? I prefer the method that we will come to to, to, to the conclusion for it. It's better than this method. Because you know that, by the way, it's important. This is a standard question. They give you two equations for two lines, and they ask you find the relative location of those. What is the relative location? It means that do they lie on each other? Are they intersecting? Are they parallel? Or they are skew parallel? We have four possibilities for two lines when it comes to space, yes? Either the lines overlap exactly, or they intersect at one single point, or they do not intersect, but they lie on the same plane. They are parallel, but they do not intersect. They are not in the same plane. They are called skew parallel. So in principle, if I give you the equations of two lines, you should be able always to tell me which one of these scenarios are going for that, that pair. Yes, this is an important question. We will come to it. But can you tell me another method here, just right here, that I can convince myself that these two are the same lines, not just using two points. Another idea. So in this method, we learn that one point is in common, and we learn that another point is also in common, so we we'll realize that they are the same. Okay? But instead of considering two points, I can consider one point and a vector. So the vectors should be parallel. So it means that I can prove that my lines are parallel, and I can show that one point is in common. If they have one point in common, and they want to be parallel, then they have to lie on each other. Yes, that's exactly. So that's one way. But can you tell me why these two lines are parallel? So for, the, for this solution, this point is enough. I don't need, I just choose a random point from here, say this one, and I check it here, I realize that yes, this is there. Okay? But why this line is parallel to this line? In Math 2C, when you want to see that the lines are parallel, you compare the slopes. The slopes should be the same. But in a space, the, the notion of a, sl a slope is lost. Instead of that, we have the direction vector, yes? So if I want to convince myself that these two lines are parallel, I will check the, a direction vector to this and a direction vector for that, 
and I convince myself that the direction vectors are parallel. If the direction vectors are parallel, the line should also be parallel. So that is what you Dinam said in the beginning, because that factor of 3 over 2 now plays a role here. So what we have here as, a, as one direction vector, let me call it D2, you remember, read the t coefficients, 3, minus 4, and 2. And what is D1, for example? One of the direction vectors for this line is 9 over 2, minus 6, and 3. Yes. But are these two vectors parallel? We have two criteria, either cross product them and convince ourselves that this is zero, but there is a better way, as Dion said, you see that everything here is multiplied by 3 half. I multiply this by 3 half, I get here. I multiply this by 3 halves, I will get here. I will multiply this by 3 half, I will get here. So this means that one of them is a multiple of the other one. And it means that they are parallel. So they are parallel, they share a one point in common, so they have to lie on each other. But it is tricky. So be careful. Just by looking at the equations, you cannot immediately conclude that no, they are not the same lines. Just be careful about this point. Uh, yeah, we will come back to this idea a little bit probably later. Uh, okay, let me ask you one question. Uh, can you read a can you read a direction vector from this form? I give you a, an equation uh, here. So here, x minus 1, so minus x plus 1 divided by 2 is 1 minus 3y divided by 4 uh, equals to minus z divided by 5. I hope that you agree with me this is an equation of a line, so you have enough experience to see something like this is an equation of the line. If I ask you, find a random point on this line, how do you, how do you do it? Just a random point on this line. It's very simple. Please immediately answer that. That's simple, yes? I want to find, yes? Then you conclude everything is equal to zero. And then you get one over two, one over four, and then zero. Um, so you want to put equal everything equal to zero, yes? Yeah, in principle this will work, yes. But I will also tell that, okay, I choose one variable to be a number, then I calculate the other two numbers, okay? So for example, I put z equal to 0 here, so this means that z is already fixed. And then when I put 0 here, then y becomes 1 over 3, because if the uh, fraction is supposed to be 0, its numerator should be 0, and then this means that that is 1. So that's a random point. Yes? But now if I ask you to read a direction vector, this is the canonical form, not the standard canonical form, but it is closer to the canonical form. If I ask you to read a direction vector, how do you read a direction vector? So the canonical form is this. Standard canonical form is this. If you respect everything, then you can read the denominators to be the components of your direction vector. Yes? But this is canonical because it is independent of t parameter. But it is not as a standard as that. Because in a standard one, this should be one, this should be one, this should be one. Okay? So it means that I have to manipulate it a little bit so that all those coefficients are one. And that is not hard, yes? So, so before reading B, I want to make this to be 1. So I divide everything by minus 1. It becomes x minus 1. The denominator becomes minus 2. I want to make this 1 equals to 1 as well. So I have to divide everything by minus 3. If I divide by minus 3, this becomes positive y. This becomes negative a third. And then this becomes negative 4 over 3. Yes? And if I want to make it 1, I divide everything by minus 1. So this means that. Now it is in a standard form. So if I ask you, can you read a direction vector? You can answer this. This is a direction vector. But because we usually avoid fractions, you can rescale it. For example, you can say, no, no, I would prefer to work with 3 times this. becomes minus 6, minus 4, or minus 3 times. Positive 6, positive 4, positive 15, yes? 
But that's also a direction vector. So I just want to make sure that you understand if you have a canonical form that's not standard, don't be in hurry and just read the denominators to be the coefficients. You have to standardize it. Okay, so these are just simple questions for the time being. But now let me ask you some other questions. That is a good question that we mix plane and lines together. Okay, so the questions that are related to a mixture of equations of planes and lines. This, so more or less the lesson of the lines are finished, but I want you to see some problems and exercises. Uh, This is a very standard problem. I expect you to be able to solve it. Okay, so example. Write an equation for the plane. Write an equation for the plane that intersects y-axis at a point whose y-coordinate is 2 and is parallel to the lines L1, x equals to 2y equals to z, and L2, x minus 1 divided by 2 is minus y is equal to y minus 2z. Yes? So, you see, write an equation for the plane. This is the previous lesson, but in this you have uh, two equations for two lines. Yes, so you want to have a plane passing through that particular point parallel to these two lines. Okay, I want to wait for you. Could you find this answer? Oh, and almost. Almost. Okay, I can wait more. Uh, let me find, yes, you can read it now. Uh, y plus 2, uh, sorry, y plus z equals to 2. Uh, what I have here is no. That's not the answer. Anyone else? Or at least, Ruben, can you tell me your, your strategy to solve the problem? Uh, so if I cross product the direction vectors of the lines, that would be the normal vector of the plane. Mm -hmm. And then I need to have a point on the plane, which is 0 to 0. Okay, so that's just a miscalculation probably, because your method is completely fine. So that's the idea, yes? Because uh, I want to write an equation for the Plane. Do you remember, for writing an equation for the plane, you need two pieces of information. You need a point on the plane, and you need a vector that you can convince yourself somehow is perpendicular to your plane. And a point is more or less given, because when they say that they, the plane is supposed to intersect the y-axis at the point whose uh, y-coordinate is 2, it means that the point 0, 2, and 0 lies on the plane. Yes? So that is good. So A... 0, 2, and 0 is on the plane. Okay, and then the point is that the, the plane that I am supposed to write is going to be parallel to L1. So if this is the plane and this is L1, and if L1 is to be parallel to my line, to my plane, the direction vector of this one is also parallel to my plane. And that will be the same thing for the other line. So this means that I have two 
in principle, if you read the direction vector here, d1, what is the direction vector here, by the way? Can you just do it immediately? 1, 2, 1. No, that's the point. I told you exactly one, in the previous one example. One, 1, 1 over ah. 2. <laughs> yes? And 1. Because the, you have to read the denominators in the case that the coefficients are 1. It might, might be that is your mistake. I don't know. Did you write this correctly? No, I think I got that wrong. Uh, okay, so, this, so I told you that you have to when you when you want to read the direction vector using the canonical form, you have to make sure that the canonical form is the standard one. Yes, so it means that this should be one, which is already have. So this two y, you should write it as two y over one, and then you write divide everything by two. This is the number in the denominator. But working with fractions are not very friendly. So it means that let us rescale it. I rescale it by 2 and I call it d1 prime. Then it becomes 2, 1, and 2. Yes? And then, okay, let us do practice again. So can you tell me what is d2 here? This is clear. This is 1, it is 2. Okay? What is the next one? Minus 1. Minus 1. What is the next one? Minus 2. No, you no, are saying it is minus 2. Yeah. Minus 1 over minus 2. Minus 1 over 2. Okay. Yes? We go over. Understandable or not? Yes. Okay. And then we rescale it. So let me call it d prime 2. By multiplying by 2, it becomes 4 minus 2 and minus 1. And now, as you said, a normal vector, one of the normal vectors of my plane by that geometrical visualization is the cross product of these two. Yes? Because if I cross product these two vectors, it I get a vector which is perpendicular to these two vectors, but these vectors are parallel to my plane, so this becomes perpendicular to my plane. So this means that I can write d1 prime cross product d2 uh, prime, and for cross product I told you it's easier for me to write this on top and to write the other one on the bottom. And then I cover this one and I do this cross product minus 1 plus 4 minus 1 plus 4 is 3. The middle one has an extra minus sign, minus 2, minus 8, minus 10, so it becomes a positive 10. And then it becomes minus 4, minus 4 is minus 8. And then what I do, I will write uh, the formula, yes? A, x minus x node, plus B, y minus y node, plus C, z minus z node is equal to 0. This is the standard equation of the plane. A, B, and C are 3, 10, and minus 8. But X node, Y node, and Z node. So. Uh, it's equal to 0. And then I would prefer to simplify it. So it becomes 3X plus 10Y minus 8Z. And then I have a minus 20. I move it to the other side, it becomes positive 20. So that is an equation that we are supposed to find. I really want you to think about these two. They are the same problem, but there is a reason that I have uh, written it two times with different equations. So write an equation for the plane that contains the given lines L1 and L2. Yes? Uh, one case, you, you have to solve it in two ways. So L1 is this, L2 is this, but I keep the L1 the same, I change L2. There are some differences going on. I want you to understand what's the difference between them. But I really want you to solve this uh, for the next time. It will teach you a lot. I think we need to continue with lines a little bit more and then we can switch. Might be the next week is also we will continue with this lesson. And then everything is here finalized. Okay, uh, we stop here. Thank you. Any questions, by the way? Thanks.